Good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to go over the gradient tool and blend tutorials real quick with you. So if you haven't already, make sure you take a moment, pause this, open up gradient tool and blend tutorial. And um, I'm going to just kind of first of all uh, take you through gradient tools. So I'm going to right click, open link a new tab, and download the file. And so once it opens up, give it a second, I will show you basically how the gradient tool works in this program. And then I'll show you how the blend tool, blending tool works. So this is taking a second. Okay, so here we are. Um, first thing is basically with this template, you have a light outline of what we're going to be creating. So if you go first of all to where it says linear gradient, you need to create a rectangle right over the top of that one. And as you drag it across, if you go up to the fill in the upper left, give me a moment. It's a little bit slow. You'll see linear gradient one underneath all the swatches up here. So if you click that, that will give you the built-in gradients. Um, if you move across to the next one, I'm not going to do all three of these. You can do these on your own. But if you click and drag while holding the shift, you can create a perfect circle. And by default, it's going to give you that um, same gradient that you used last time. So if you go into here and you look down in the swatches, you'll see radial gradient one. And that will give you a radial gradient which works in the middle. Now, most of the time when you're going to be working with gradients, you're going to want to choose your own colors. And you will have this tool along the toolbar, the gradient tool, which if you double click it, will activate the uh, gradient panel over here, which you can see there's linear and gradient there, or li linear and radial there. And there's also a slider here where you can choose your own colors. So that's what we're going to do with this next one. We're going to make a custom gradient. So I'm grabbing a rectangle, and I'm going to drag it across. And we want it to be a, regular, a linear gradient. I'll move this down so we can see the colors here. And if you click on the uh, first little stop here and go down to swatches, we have a red, I, I believe it's a red to yellow gradient. So we start with red and then go to the other stop here and double click it. Now notice there's a color and there's a swatches option here. So if you choose color, you're going to get basically different uh, brightness and darkness of black to start. Uh, if that's what color you had before. But if you click on yellow and you go back to color, you can see you have the options for CMYK. You can also uh, uh, go into the opacity and some other options on there as well. So if I pull this back up, this is now, whoops, this is now our gradient here. And then we have different gradient angles. So I'm going to draw a rectangle real quick and show you how you can do one at an angle. So we need to activate the gradient tool. And you'll notice there's this line that appears. And if you drag it from a corner, you'll see a little um, circular arrow appear. And you can still edit the stops. So I know that I'm going from like a, I believe it's like a dark purple to like a lighter pinkish color on this one. And um, basically, I believe that's how it was. Oh, it goes the opposite way. So if I do this, I can actually go back in. As long as I go back and activate that gradient tool, I can rotate this all the way around. And I can drag it over like that. 
And when you've created your gradient, um, there's three more, of course, that you're going to do. Um, try rotating that bar different ways. Um, but you can always go back and then change it as long as you have not done what's called expanding appearance. And we'll talk about that at a later point. Um, the next one, you're going to need to create this shape. And one way to do that is to use the uh, pen tool. You can also uh, use the paintbrush tool. So if I just trace around this. And then go to the fill here. Um, you can see, I just chose a color for now. Um, you can see how that starts. Now if I go into here, I need to actually see what colors we have here. I believe it's kind of like a teal to kind of a bluish color. So if I do the gradient tool, and this is a linear, so I'm going to go back over here, switch it to linear, and rotate it a little bit. Um, double click on that and choose kind of a teal color and go back here and choose kind of a bluish color. So that will create that kind of gradient. Now with gradient swatches, if you create a rectangle on here, there's actually a bunch of pre-made swatches and we'll have to look at what they have on these. So if we go up to the swatches here, there's a swatch libraries menu button here. And there's also all of these right here, which are basically the ones we're looking at. If you go down here, you'll see under gradients, there are a ton of other ones in here. So like, for instance, if I go to pastels, it's going to add pastels to my, um, my list here. But for this, I believe all of these, Sorry, I believe all of these are all up here. So I know this one's like a yellow, uh, it's a purple to kind of pinkish thing. And I believe it's, um, I believe it might be this. It might be the blue, I guess, yellow to blue to the purple. Yeah, and again, this is a linear gradient. Um, and the way, the direction it's in, it's automatically going to go to what you had before, but I'm going to bring it down so it goes from left to right. So that's our first one. And the other ones, like I said, you can figure out on your own. All right, so I'm going to show you something with color here that happens in Illustrator. It doesn't happen in Photoshop. Illustrator is very precise about color, and not all black is created equal. And what I mean by that is when you choose black and you have a certain color selected, it's going to give you a very dark version of that color. So if I go in and do a, I'll start off with a radial gradient and go into my gradient tool now, click on the middle. I know I want blue, so I'm going to choose blue. But watch what happens when I do that. You get this really murky color um, between blue and black. And so what you have to do in order to give it, make it fade more blue to black instead of lose its saturation as it turns to black is double click on the second stop and go to the original color you had, which I believe mine was this, and then go up to here and K, which stands for black and CMYK. You drag that all the way over. Now you're going to get more of a gradual um, switch from blue to black instead of one in which the saturation decreases. All right, this next part's a little tricky. And so what you have to do here is use the text tool to start. You don't have to use that same font. Um, you can type in your name or whatever you want. I'm just going to type, I'll just leave it as Lauren Ipsum. And I'm going to change it to something bold. You're going to want a fat font for this. So find a bold fat font and I'll use this one, Bernard. If you want a really good fat font, you can use Bernard and just pull that across. And here's the thing, you try to use a gradient on this and there's not much that's going to happen because it's still a text object. 
So what we have to do is, it's basically Illustrator's version of rasterizing it, except instead of rasterizing it, we're turning it into a path. We're turning it into shapes. So to do that, if you right click on your text and go to Create Outlines, what that does is it preserves the shapes here, expands them into, or the letters into shapes. So now you could actually edit the the letters, you could make each letter do something different. But for our cases, we want to select the whole thing and do a gradient over the top. And what you'll see, if you just start clicking on each of these letters, is it's going to do the gradient in each one. And what we want to do is actually have the whole thing with one big gradient. So if you drag it across, if you, sorry, if you select everything first, and then, ah, hold up. You'll have to forgive me, this is not working the way it normally does. Let's try this again. I want the regular select tool. Ah, hold on. And what you're going to want to do, I believe, if you group these, or ungroup them maybe, hold on, Let's see if this does it. Yeah, if you ungroup them, it'll allow you to do a um, gradient across all of them. So this was red to blue, and it's a linear, or red to black, and it's a linear gradient. So um, anyways, I'll show you that again in just a second. But um, get back to here and choose my stops. So I want red. Now you could do individual colors, but it's a lot easier if you do it as a group here. And remember the black, we want to change this to the color first and then go in and change it to black. And that way you get that nice fade. So if I go back in now, this is closer to what the original looked like. Whoops. And I'm in isolation mode right now. So what that's doing is um, basically letting me work with individual parts of a group. But this isn't a group anymore either. I'll try this again really quick just so I can show you the correct way. I'm going to do lorem ipsum. I'm going to make it big. And I'm going to right click, create outlines. And then right click and ungroup. And now if I use my gradient going down hold up let's try regrouping this again and seeing if this does the trick There you go. You might have to fiddle around with it for a second. It gets a little bit testy, but um, yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this again. Straw gradient. to go down and I want it to be a linear gradient. So I'll start from up here and move down that way. And if I change my stops again from red to red that's really black. There we go. You might have to fiddle with it and you know that's 
something with this gradient tool when you're working with letters it gets a little bit tricky but if you do kind of what I did and uh, click first try one of the swatches and then use the gradient to draw it across the whole thing then you should be able to switch it on there for this last part over here um, I want you to try to recreate this uh, penguin using the uh, shape tools you'll need to use the selection tool the direct select to smush things out a little bit in certain places or you grab the points and you can flatten it out and then the gradients over the top of that and that's this first part of the lesson